On June 10th of 1940, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini entered World War II on the Axis side, declaring war on France and Great Britain. Two days later, submarine Bagnolini of the Italian Navy, Regia Marina, sunk British cruiser Calypso south of Crete. This was the opening salvo of the Battle of the Mediterranean. The Italian Navy, whilst capable, suffered from a lack of coordination with the Air Force, late adoption of radar technology, and most importantly, fuel shortages. This limited its operational reach to that of its escorting destroyers, about 500 nautical miles. Hence, the main British naval bases of Alexandria and Gibraltar were beyond their grasp. But to attack these and other strategic targets, the Regia Marina could rely on the innovative weapons and tactics of its special assault forces, the 10th Flotilla MAS. In this video, we'll focus on the Italian raids at Alexandria, Gibraltar and Crete. Before moving forward, allow us to thank the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends, that has a whole world of amazing champions, all from unique factions. And you can play with all of them by downloading the game to your phone or PC using our link in the description. The Bannerlord faction reminds us of medieval knights with a massive kingdom in the west of Teleria. They're arrogant and warlike and believe themselves to be good, but others would disagree. They conquered their lands from non-humans and kept it through centuries of persecution. Now with the Bannerlords weakened by the wars of their king, the time may be at hand for these races to right an ancient wrong. Raid has so many factions and so many champions to play, making it an excellent choice. While the epic music creates a dark and gritty atmosphere, everyone will find something that they will enjoy. This month Raid just released an insane amount of new content and new things to do. 11 amazing new champions, 200 brand new missions, and an exclusive legendary champion as your reward if you manage to finish them all. And if that's not enough, they also added 5 tough new levels to almost every single dungeon. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on our links and support our channel by downloading Raid today. The Italian Navy started experimenting with light assault craft as early as 1906, the first prototypes later evolving into the Armed Torpedo Motorboats or MAS in their Italian acronym. The doctrine behind these weapons was to use cheap and easily replaceable craft to inflict as much damage as possible to enemy vessels while in port. The MAS scored some victories during World War I by sinking Austro-Hungarian vessels in the Adriatic. Their raids sank battleship Wien on the 9th of December 1917, the dreadnought St. Istvan on the 10th of June 1918, and battleship Viribus Unitis on the 1st of November 1918. This naval concept was revived in 1935, when fascist Italy's invasion of Abyssinia led to a diplomatic crisis with the United Kingdom. Navy engineers, Captains Tessio Tesse and Elias Toski, developed a prototype for a self-propelled steerable torpedo manned by two frogmen. Its purpose was to infiltrate enemy harbours and place explosive charges under the hull of enemy vessels. The official name of these torpedoes was SLC, after the Italian acronym for Slow Running Torpedo. But they became known to sailors as PIGS due to poor maneuverability. At the same time, other Navy units tested the effectiveness of the so-called Gamma Men or scuba divers tasked with planting explosives under enemy ships. Finally, in November of 1936, members of the Italian royal family Brothers Amadeo and Emone of Savoy Osta first experimented with the MTM, the Modified Tourism Motorboat. This was a small launch loaded with explosives that could be transported close to an enemy ship. The pilot would set it on course to ram the target and jump overboard just before impact. On the 28th of September 1938, the naval staff ordered the creation of a special weapons section within the 1st Flotilla MAS. In March of 1941, the Special Weapons Section came under the leadership of Commander Vittorio Mokogata, who adopted the name 10th Flotilla MAS. Mokogata structured the 10th MAS into two units. The first, in charge of the surface assault boats and the training school, was headed by Lieutenant Commander Giorgio Giobe. The second, responsible for the pigs and the gamma men, was under Lieutenant Commander Junior Valerio Borghese. 
known as the Black Prince due to his aristocratic origins and fervent support of fascism. The best known exploit of the 10th MAS was the raid on the British Royal Navy's main harbour at Alexandria, Egypt on the 19th of December 1941. The naval base had been in the crosshairs of the Regia Marina since August of 1940. On the 12th, submarine Iride had left La Spezia carrying four SLCs, or pigs, headed to Alexandria. However, it was intercepted by three RAF torpedo bombers and sunk in the Gulf of Bomba. The operation was repeated in September, when submarine Gonda approached the Egyptian port armed with three SLCs, but the vessel was attacked by two destroyers, one torpedo boat and a Sunderland bomber. After a chase of 12 hours, the crew decided to scuttle the Gonda. SLC inventor Elias Toski was among one of the captured divers. An attack on Alexandria was scheduled again for December of 1941. This time it would be led by Prince Borghese, who had already displayed an uncanny ability to avoid detection with his submarine Shire. The mission left La Spezia on the 3rd of December, loaded three SLCs on board, and headed towards the Italian base of Leros in the Aegean. On the night of the 9th, the Shire was spotted by an RAF recon aircraft, but Italian naval intelligence had broken the Royal Navy tactical code and greeted the plane with the right recognition signal, a green light. Bocchese's crew reached Leros on the 12th for a rendezvous with six MAS underwater operators. Then, on the 18th of December, at 20.30 hours, the Shire maneuvered to the launch position, 1.3 nautical miles off Alexandria's commercial harbour. From there, the Black Prince released his three SLCs. The models used in the raid were 26 feet long and 21 inches in diameter. The electric motor had a range of 15 miles at a maximum speed of 3 knots. Each was equipped with a detachable warhead containing 660 pounds of explosives and a breathing device known as ARO. Although prone to malfunction, the ARO was rather advanced for its time. It allowed users to submerge 49 feet deep and did not leave a trail of bubbles, essential for a stealth attack. The three pigs were manned by three teams of two men each, led by Captain Marcellia, Captain Martellotta and Lieutenant Durand de la Pen. When a Royal Navy squadron returned into port, the three teams seized the moment to enter the harbour boom or entrance barrier. They then cleared the next obstacle, a patrol boat dropping depth charges at regular intervals. Inside the harbour, the SLCs made their way to separate targets. Marchalia and leading seaman Skegat reached the battleship Queen Elizabeth at 0300 hours, found a gap in its protective net, and plunged their pig. They then detached the warhead, slung it on a cable, and clamped it to the ship's bilge keels. At 0325, Marchalia set the fuse to detonate at 0600. The team scuttled their pig and swam to shore, reaching land at 0430. The two raiders remained at large for two days. Even if still dressed in Italian Navy fatigues, they evaded capture by simply claiming they were French. They boarded a train to Rosetta for their rendezvous with a rescue craft, but were eventually arrested by the Egyptian police. Battleship Valiant was the target of Lieutenant de la Pen and Chief Petty Officer Bianchi. They reached her at 0200, but then ran into a series of mishaps. They lost control of the SLC, which sank under the Valiant's hull. Then an ARO malfunction forced them to emerge. They were captured a few minutes later while clinging on to a buoy. Luckily for them, de la Pen had managed to activate the fuse on his pig's charge. Finally, Captains Martellotta and Marino, piloting the third SLC, had orders to destroy an aircraft carrier. As this was not in port, they headed to the oil tanker Sagona, weighing in at 7,554 GRT. The two placed the charges at 0255, set the fuse and swam for shore. They were quickly arrested by Egyptian police and handed over to the British. De La Pen and Bianchi had also been taken to British intelligence offices at Ras Tin for questioning, but revealed nothing of their mission. 
At 0400, they were locked inside the Valiant. If there was a danger, they would be forced to reveal it to save their lives. De La Pen spoke at only 10 minutes to 6, asking to see the captain, Charles Morgan. He told Morgan that the ship would sink shortly, but refused to give more details. As De La Pen was sent back to his cell, he could hear an order of evacuation blaring through the ship. Then, one after the other, all charges exploded. The Valiant suffered a blast area of 60 by 30 feet, which had flooded Shell Remay. As she rocked violently, De La Pen was able to escape his confinement. From the bridge of the battleship, he was able to see the effects of the explosion on Queen Elizabeth. It damaged an area 190 feet by 60 feet, causing four boiler rooms to flood. Finally, the explosion under the Sargona not only put it out of action until 1946, but damaged the nearby destroyer Jervis, which required a month in dry dock for repairs. The victory claimed by Bocchese and his crew allowed some relief of the chokehold on convoys supplying Italo-German forces in North Africa. In December, 82% of materiel shipped from Italy to Libya arrived in port. In January of 1942, it was almost 100%. The lack of battleship escorts also hindered British efforts to supply Malta from Egyptian ports. In the year after the raid, only 8 out of 25 merchant ships reached Valletta from Alexandria. One year before the Alexandria raid, Borghese had the chance to develop his craft with a series of attacks on Gibraltar. From September 1940 to May 1941, the Black Prince led three missions to the British possessions, which were aborted due to the absence of targets or failed because of malfunctions. All SLC crews managed to evade capture. But on one occasion, British naval intelligence was able to obtain photos of a pig thus giving them the first glimpse of this new secret weapon. As a result, from November of 1940, Royal Navy Lieutenant Lionel Buster Crabbe devised the defensive measure of dropping one-pound depth charges in the harbour at intervals of 20 to 40 minutes. Success for Bergesi and his men finally arrived on the 20th of September 1941. At 0107, the Shire commander released three pigs which successfully cleared the entrance booms and avoided Crab's depth charges. The three teams sank the tanker Fiona Shell, the freighter Durham, and damaged the tanker Denbydale. In a single action, the Allies lost 21,489 gross registered tons worth of shipping, and the 10th MAS suffered no losses. As Borghese was now preparing for the raid on Alexandria, his frogmen adopted a new approach. With complicity from the Spanish secret services, they rented a seaside bungalow, Villa Camela, near Puente Mayorga, a few miles away from Gibraltar in Spanish territory. From there, teams of gamma men simply dove into the Bay of Gibraltar and swam into the harbour. In two separate actions on the 14th of July and 14th of September, they sunk five further cargo ships. Once their cover was blown by a Russo-Spanish double agent, known as the Queen of Hearts, the Italians relocated to a decommissioned tanker scuttled in the port of Algeciras. The ship Altera was fitted with a secret hatch below water level, from where SLCs could be launched towards Gibraltar. Their first mission on December 7, 1942, was a failure. Crab had increased the defences of the harbour, and depth charges were detonated at increased frequency. Three Italian frogmen died as a result of the explosions, while two were taken prisoner. Only one returned to the Ulterra. Buster Crab salvaged some of the Italian equipment and planned to use it against the Ulterra, which he suspected was the base of the raiders. But the ship was moored in a neutral harbour, and his action was vetoed by the British cabinet. To the officer's frustration, the manned torpedoes returned again on the 8th of May and 4th of August 1943, claiming six more cargo ships. During their run on Gibraltar, the silent enemies of the Royal Navy had sunk or damaged a total of 14 ships, suffering three dead and two prisoners. Another remarkable success for the 10th Flotilla was achieved with the use of the MTM motorboats in March of 1941. On the evening of the 25th, 
two Italian destroyers left the Dodecanese island of Leros, heading for Suda Bay, the Allied fleet anchorage in northwest Crete. Each carried three MTMs. These small vessels were launched at 2330, some nine nautical miles off the entrance of the bay. By 0445, on the morning of the 26th, all six MTMs had cleared the three booms protecting the harbour, undetected by searchlights and artillery batteries. The commander of the operation, Lieutenant Fagioni, ordered his men to wait for the light of dawn before attacking. At 0500, Sub-Lieutenant Cabrini and Chief Petty Officer Tedeschi positioned their craft ready to ram the major objective, the 8,250-ton cruiser HMS York. At 0530, their 17-foot MTMs were launched at full speed, 39 miles per hour, towards the target. Cabrini and Tedeschi locked the rudder on a collision course, then at 90 yards from the York, they jumped into the water. The MTMs rammed the side of the York. At this stage, small impact fuse charges split each boat in two. When the bow sunk, water pressure ignited the main explosive charges, 660 pounds of TNT. HMS York began listing, while gunners on board fired at the sky, believing they had been hit by an air attack. Meanwhile, a third MTM, piloted by Chief Petty Officer Piketty, crippled the Norwegian tanker Pericles. The remaining MTM crews narrowly missed their intended targets, and all six crewmen were captured. Both vessels were declared a total loss, more than 16,000 tons of shipping disabled to the expense of six motorboats and six prisoners. On the 27th of July, the MAS units tried to replicate this success. 50 crewmen staged a large-scale attack with SLCs and MTMs against Valletta Harbour, Malta. Unfortunately for them, they were stalled by the defensive barriers of the port and came under heavy fire from the RAF and artillery batteries. 25-year-old officer Carabelli launched his MTM against St. Elmo's Bridge in a suicide mission, destroying parts of it. Unfortunately, the sacrifice was in vain as the debris obstructed passage for further craft. Eventually, the Malta expedition was a failure, costing the MAS 11 prisoners and 10 killed, among them the original commander of the 10th flotilla, Mokogata. The Malta failure and other early setbacks were followed by a string of successes. Besides the ones mentioned today, the flotilla conducted several more operations in Huelva, Algiers, Iskenderun, Mersin, off the Egyptian coast and even in Sevastopol against the Soviet fleet. A summary of operations shows that between the 10th of June 1940 and 8th of September 1943, the 10th MAS sank or disabled five warships and 22 cargo ships in the Mediterranean alone. This was at the cost of 20 Italians killed and 53 taken prisoner, out of a total of just 238 men employed in these operations. Following Mussolini's deposition on the 25th of July 1943, King Victor Emmanuel III and Field Marshal Badoglio negotiated an armistice with the Allies, effective on the 8th of September. This interrupted the operations of the 10th Flotilla MAS, including Bocchese's next daring plan, an attack on New York Harbor to be conducted with a midget submarine. Italy split into the fascist Social Italian Republic and the pro-Allied Kingdom of the South and so did the flotilla, whose men swore allegiance to the Duce or the King, continuing the war on opposite sides. More videos on naval warfare are on the way, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see them. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description. To know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.